Hello maths fans, Dr Tom Crawford here at the University of Oxford and today we're going to be solving some partial differential equations. I've already introduced the concept of partial differentiation in another video, so if you haven't seen that yet or you just need a little reminder, make sure to check that out because in this video I'm going to be assuming that we all know what a partial derivative is and generally how they work. Now PDEs are generally much trickier to solve than ordinary differential equations or ODEs and that's really because there are more variables present which means we have a lot more cases to consider. So let's start with a really simple example to show you what I mean. So let's take a function f which is a function of two variables x and y and we're going to try and solve the partial differential equation df by dx is equal to zero. The subscript x here just means partial f partial x and I'll be using this subscript notation throughout the rest of the video. Now if this was an ODE then we just integrate and get a constant. If you integrate zero, you get a plus c, your integration constant, which makes sense because the derivative of a constant gives you zero. However, this is not an ordinary differential equation. This is a partial differential equation. But we can learn a lot from its ODE counterpart. So as I've said, if this is an ODE, we know that when we differentiate a constant, we get zero. And that would tell us how to integrate back up to get the solution. So here, we want to think about what can I differentiate with respect to x so that I will get zero. One simple example might be if f was equal to y. If I take the x partial derivative, of this function, then that is looking at how f changes in the x direction. But since f doesn't depend on x, it doesn't change in the x direction, and so therefore df by dx partial is indeed zero for this particular function. But there was nothing special about me picking y. What if I'd had y squared, or maybe even sine of y, or log of y, or even e to the y plus y cubed over 4, for example. All of these functions, when you take the x partial derivative, will give you 0. So they are all valid solutions to this PDE. So in fact, any function at all of the variable y will differentiate with respect to x to give us zero. And if you don't believe me, you can try this for yourself in the Maple Calculator app. Write any expression that's a function of y only, and when you click on the x derivative, which is one of your options, you'll see that the answer is always zero, no matter how complicated the expression that you input. You can also, of course, see the y derivative for any weird and wonderful function that you can input, and I can assure you it is quite good fun seeing just how messy and creative you can get with your functions. So what this means for our PDE is that the solution f is equal to any function g of the variable y. Because when we take the x derivative of a function of y only, as we've seen, we always get zero. And here you can think of this integration function as playing the role of the integration constant plus c. And we're going to see this concept appearing in the next few examples. Now let's try something a little harder. So let's suppose we have two derivatives, d2f 
by dy dx is equal to zero. Now, in our first example, we had a single partial derivative in x, and we solved that by integrating with respect to x and thinking carefully about what would differentiate to give zero. So let's do the same here. So we can integrate with respect to x and say that df by dy is equal to a function g of y. Just as before, if I take the x partial derivative of this function of y, I'll get zero. So it does indeed satisfy fyx is naught. Next, we need to integrate both sides with respect to y. So let's just go ahead and try that and see what happens. So if I integrate the left with respect to y, I get f. And then the right is going to be the integral of g of y. And we don't know what this function g of y is, so I can just write it as the integral of some unknown function. And then similar to how here we said differentiating a function of y with respect to x gives me zero, my integration constant has now become an integration function. So any function of x, so let's call it h of x, when differentiated with respect to y will disappear. So just to check this makes sense, this is my f, then differentiating this expression with respect to y as a partial derivative gets rid of the integral, so I get g of y, and then this general function h of x will completely vanish because it's a function of x only. We can in fact simplify this even further as we can say the integral of a function of y just gives me another generic function of y. So we could specify that capital G of y is the integral of lowercase g of y, but ultimately it doesn't really matter. The key concept here is that if I have any function f which has some function of y plus some function of x, then when I do an x and y partial derivative on this function, I will get zero. And this makes sense. We can double check to see if this is indeed a solution to this PDE. So if this is my f, if I take my y derivative, the x function vanishes and I get something here involving y. And then when I take the x derivative, the y function vanishes. So I will get back to zero. So this is indeed the most general form of solution to this second order PDE. So far, we've only looked at simple PDEs in the sense that in both cases, we have them equal to zero. They were homogeneous partial differential equations. Now, let's look at something slightly more complicated. So we're going to consider a function u of x, y. So again, a function of two variables. And this is going to satisfy u x x minus u is equal to zero. So now we have two terms involving our solution u. We've got a second order x derivative and the actual solution or function u itself. Looking at this equation, we can see it's going to be a little trickier because our previous approach of just integrating both sides of the equation unfortunately isn't going to work. Because if I were to integrate with respect to x, this term would be fine, but then I'd be left with the integral of the unknown function that we're trying to solve for. So we're going to have to take a slightly different approach. If we think back to how we dealt with our first equation, we used our knowledge of ordinary differential equations to help us 
to come up with a sensible way of trying to solve the PDE. So let's try something similar for this one. Let's first pretend, and I do mean pretend, that this is in fact an ODE. So let's suppose that we were solving d2u by dx squared, where these are now full derivatives in x, minus u is equal to zero. So let's just run with this and see if we can get anywhere useful, because it certainly helped us here with thinking about the fact that the solution was a constant precisely because it differentiated to give us zero. So maybe we can get something by looking at the solution of the ODE and then trying to relate it back to what might happen in the partial derivative case. To solve this equation, we would try a solution of the form e to the m x. Plug that in to get our auxiliary equation, which here will just be m squared minus 1 equals 0 which tells us that m is plus or minus 1. And so for this ODE, our solution is u equals a e to the x plus b e to the minus x. Now in our first two examples, we've seen here that integration constants, which here are a and b, are replaced by integration functions. And here we have two x partial derivatives. So that means our integration constant or integration function will be dependent on y only. So why don't we try replacing a, which is our integration constant, by, let's call it lowercase a, of y, so a function of y. And similarly, let's replace b, which was just a constant, by lowercase b, which is now a function of y. So this is, I would argue, a plausible solution to our PDE. And this came from pretending that this was an ODE, solving the ODE using our known methods, which here was the auxiliary equation, and then, as I mentioned at the beginning, cleverly turning the problem back into something that relates to partial derivatives. Now, of course, we don't know this is the solution yet. I've just said this is a sensible thing to try. So let's plug it in and see if this will indeed satisfy our PDE taking the first x derivative, du by dx. So this is a function of y, so it's unchanged. Then I differentiate e to the x, which just gives me e to the x. Then I've got a function of y again, so that's unchanged by the x partial, but I'll get a minus from the exponential. So I'll get a minus by e to the minus x. And then my second derivative is to differentiate this with respect to x. So again, the a isn't touched, and I'll just get another e to the x. And then I'll get a minus coming down again to give me plus b to the y e to the minus x. And this, of course, is indeed equal to u. So we got to the solution through some clever guesswork and using our knowledge of ODEs, and then we checked that it worked to see that we do indeed have a valid solution to our original PDE. Now this approach of solving the ODE and replacing constants with functions will actually work to solve a large number of simple PDEs. There are, of course, more advanced PDEs which require other methods and I will talk about these in future videos but for now if you want to practice this technique of pretending it's an ODE solving and then converting back into a PDE solution 
Then once again, I've created a worksheet in Maple Learn, which you can access for free by clicking on the link in the video description, which is full of example questions for solving PDEs using this approach. And don't forget, the Maple Calculator app will actually calculate the partial derivatives of a function for you, which is a great way to check your answer actually satisfies the original PDE. Thank you everyone for watching. Please do remember to subscribe to the channel if you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you all soon.